This is Noah with Automus, and in this video, we're going to look at a demo of a method to automatically deploy an Active Directory test domain into Microsoft Azure. If you're anything like me, you leap at every chance you get to deploy a new AD domain when anybody needs a test or dev environment stood up. Or you actually don't, and you try to reuse some crappy test lab that was installed a couple years ago and hope that works. The problem here that we're looking at is that we need to develop against a lab environment. We need Active Directory installed, but it's obviously annoying and time consuming to set up a new environment every time we need to test some new app or system. So the goal is we want a lab with an AD domain. We want that in 20 minutes or so. We don't want to do a lot of work. And to throw a little icing on the cake, we don't want to use any hardware either. So the approach we take here is using Microsoft Azure to use a public cloud to host an isolated and on-demand test environment. And then we use Azure's automation runbooks to do that provisioning for us, setting all of it up from end to end. And at the end, we get a, do a domain controller with AD installed, and we log into it, and we're good to go. Before we jump into the demo of the runbook, I thought it'd be nice to sit through about an hour of watching somebody manually deploy an Active Directory domain controller just to get a real sense of everything involved. Just kidding again, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to look at that process at about 40 times speed. You'll just see a bunch of p things being clicked on and, and things being entered on the screen, but the point is there's a lot that goes into it. After we see that, I'll go through the actual runbook demo itself. So I think we can all agree that montages are awesome, but I think we can also all agree that they don't exist in real life, so we're going to have to figure out a better way. I'm here in my Azure account in the Azure portal, and I'm looking at my automation account, which is one of the options available here in the left navigation. If I open up my Automation 1 Azure account, and I look at my runbooks, I'll see that I have a runbook in here that is called New Test AD Domain. Now all I have to do is run this runbook and enter a few things, and all of that that we just watched will happen automatically. So the first thing it wants is a credential name. I actually have specified already or defined the credential in Azure, so I don't need to actually write anything in here. It wants to know the subscription name. I also have that already defined, so I don't have to write anything in there. It's going to use a default domain name. If I want to change that, I could. It's also going to use this default location in the central US. You could change it to whatever region you'd like it to be in. And then the only thing we need to really enter here is I need to give a password and a username for the domain admin that's going to be created. So I'll just create this password and this username. And then if I wanted to change the name of the virtual machine that's going to be our domain controller, I could do that here. But I think DC1 is fine, so I'll click Go. What's going to happen at this point is that the runbook is going to start and it's going to go through and start provisioning all of the things in Azure that we need to have in order for this lab to be set up. So the first thing would be 
we need a cloud service and then the virtual machine will sit inside of that cloud service. We also need a storage account that the VM is going to be stored in. We also need a virtual network that's going to be an isolated virtual network for the domain to be in. And we also need uh, the virtual machine itself. So all of that is going to be done. And at the end of it, Azure is taken care of. And we actually need to get into the virtual machine itself into Windows and install the AD role. And we also need to make sure it's promoted to a domain controller and DNS gets installed and all that good stuff. So this will take about 20 minutes to do all of that. And by the time we're done, we're just going to see that the that domain controller is ready. We have a remote login to it and we're just going to connect and we're on our way. And now skipping about 20 minutes into the future, we can see that our job has completed. The runbook is done and it's output a little bit of history for us to look at. We can see what status it ended up with, who it was started by, the timestamps, and so on. We can also see what inputs were given. There's our password in clear text. Take note of that, so you should change it when you log in for the first time. And also we can see some output that came out of the runbook at the end. This isn't really going to be human readable, but if errors had occurred during the run, they would show up here. So let's look at what the runbook actually did. If we get out of our automation section here, we can go look, first of all, we expect a new virtual machine to be created. And there it is, we called it DC1. Notice it can exist alongside other VMs of the same name. The key is that it lives in a unique cloud service. And we can see that by looking over here at the DNS name, it looks like domain and some gibberish numbers. That has to be a unique number, and what I've done with this runbook is put a timestamp on the end. So that's actually 2015, uh, 03 is March 19th. And if I go to look at my cloud service, I'll see that number here. Now, um, the other things we should see are a storage account that's dedicated. And we should see it actually, they all have the same name prefix so you can see what is tied together. And we should also see a virtual network down here under our networks. There we have domain uh, whatever VNet. So that's our network. And if we take a peek in our network, we should see that it has the domain DC defined as the DNS server, which it is, the only server. It's going to have that starting address hard-coded as a static address, and we see that it has some virtual address space set up for us. We're in the 10.0.0.0 space, and we have a DC subnet, which is dedicated for domain controllers uh, at this portion of it. And then we have an empty portion for member servers. If we want to come in now and add some member servers to our, dom our new domain, we can add them here and just tack them onto this subnet when we're building them. So that's... Um, all there is to it, all of this has been built by us. It happened in 20 minutes. We clicked a couple buttons and, and entered a username and password, and it's done. Now let's just test it out to see if, in fact, our VM is alive and whether Active Directory is on it. So if we come to our VM here and connect, I will get my RDP file. I'll go and connect, and I'll provide my credentials that I supplied when I ran this runbook. And once we get through the RDP process, we should get into the machine here and see that we have uh, Active Directory installed, hopefully. Server manager's coming up. Looks like everything's healthy. If I go into tools and look in my users and computers, my tools are here. That's a good sign. And it looks like I have a domain.local, and we have our domain controller right here. The other thing you'll find if you want to see what happened, if you go into the C drive and look at the deployment logs file or deployment results directory, there's an AD deploy log here that's a trace of the entire setup process. So you can see what uh, functional level was set up, what the site name was given, uh, DNS, and so on. And that's the demo. For more information on how to get this runbook installed or how it works in more detail, we'll take a look at that in the other videos. Thanks.